everybody, everybody, everything new under the sun. This is an unbox of Avonet's Wi-Fi repeater slash bridge. Vonet's Vane. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it is a high performance Wi-Fi repeater bridge. And um, this unit is uh, fairly cheap, about 30 bucks, and I got it to hook up a midnight solar charge controller uh, to the internet so I could uh, track it. So looking around the box, on the back of it, you'll notice uh, it has an almost a quick start guide there with the Wi-Fi password, the default password, um, the config URL that you go, got to go to, the IP address range and the subnet that it's on, the username and password uh, for the actual access to the uh, device. Now this particular one is the VAP11G-300. So this is a 300 megabit uh, unit and apparently it's supposed to go 100 meters. Now in my particular scenario, I needed to go about 50 meters, but that's through walls of a house. Um, the uh, next range up, the, v the VAP VAP11G500, goes 500 meters, um, and it apparently uh, also is an access point client, a Wi-Fi repeater, and a Wi-Fi bridge. This one is just a Wi-Fi bridge. So the unbox goes like this. There is the unit itself. I'm going to take that out. We've got a QR code there with a thank you. I assume it takes you to the website. It's got some um, Chinese on there some certificate, I, I don't know what all this is, I guess a, a QA, uh, quality assurance uh, test. Then you get this little uh, paper manual here, little booklet, and it's got a fair amount of information, to be absolutely honest. They do a good job putting a lot of information there. It, it is um, uh, Chinglish, as, uh, as they say. Um, it's usable, it's certainly usable. It's got actually a number of uh, color pictures in it, you can see there, color pictures various examples of how you're going to use this unit, um, also the transmission distance of various models of this particular unit. So the one I got is the, the purple guy, obviously, and we'll see that in a second. It's a fairly easy setup, although the interface itself uh, isn't the most straightforward, to be honest. There's no a particular um, wizard, uh, but all in all, it, it seems... Uh, you know, straightforward. All you do is, as long as you know how to generally base, uh, you know, set up a, a wireless router um, access point, um, then you can kind of uh, fudge this one and uh, enter in stuff and get this thing going. Like I say, I'm using it for a bridge, um, and it's powered by USB, which is really cool, um, or between 5 and 15 volts. And why I like that is because it's going on a 12 volt solar setup, so I can wire this directly to the battery and uh, have it run off 12 volts, which is brilliant, or simply uh, run it off USB, the, the 5 volts there. You have a secondary input also for power, but you can use the USB if you want. And then it has a network jack. So my particular setup is a charge controller that only has an Ethernet jack. So this comes with an Ethernet jack, and it basically makes anything that has an Ethernet jack a Wi-Fi client. Here you can see the 5 to 15 volts. That's really key um, and really handy to have that range uh, of ability there. Uh, so like I say, in my case, off-grid solar case, uh, I'm going to plug it into 12 volts. And then even on the back of this unit, so you don't forget, it has the uh, config URL and the IP address, uh, subnet range that it's on, the password. Um, so they do a really good job of putting the, the key information there because you're going to lose the manual. Um, you're gonna, you're not gonna know where it is. Uh, years down the road, you're just gonna look on the back of it and be able to configure it. On the back of it, there also is a uh, reset button, which you can use to get it back to factory uh, default settings. When you do plug it into your computer, you plug in the Ethernet jack, and the USB is simply for power. Um, what I'm gonna do is uh, hook it up to my MacBook so that I can go configure it as a bridge, and then what I'll do is I'll test the MacBook and uh, see if I'm able to access the internet uh, simply through uh, the unit itself. So in this case the Wi-Fi is turned off uh, right now. So the first thing you want to do is go to the URL of course I was just testing to go to CNN.com to see if it would work um, and, and then you want to go to the uh, Vonitz config here it will uh, show up in a second once it uh, actually uh, connects. So what I did here, I had to go into my network config. I had to switch from DHCP and then back to manual and then back to DHCP. So it would grab an IP address uh, from, uh, the, from the bridge itself. The bridge does have a DHCP server on it. Um, so you'll see in a second here, 
um, I'll go to manual and then back to DHCP and it will uh, eventually come up with an IP address from the bridge uh, itself. I know it's the bridge because the rest of my Wi-Fi network is a 192.168.5.x uh, range and so this one is a 254.x uh, range for the IP address there. And then once it finally does uh, get its IP address, um, then you're able to go to the config and uh, go ahead and load it. So we pull up a browser, we go to Vonet CFG, and here's where you enter the admin admin. That's the default username and password here. Of course, we leave English. Uh, it's, a, it's a fairly nice splash page, you know, for 30 bucks, not bad. Now here, it will search for a Wi-Fi uh, signals and uh, then you can pick the one that you want to connect to because we want to use this as a, a bridge this is the one that's going to be interacting with so I pick uh, my particular Wi-Fi network click next there's a bit of a wizard there now the source Wi-Fi password I think this is the password that actually is for um, the main access uh, your main Wi-Fi network I don't know I don't even know why it's plain text to be honest um, but as a bridge it will pass you through and uh, you'll be able to uh, get in, obviously, with your own device uh, to it. Um, and that also serves, uh, apparently, as the password for the hotspot. I know a particular uh, a professional on this interface. It's certainly a little weird. Um, they seem to have a lot of options here. Um, they've got some wireless security. You can turn on and off the local hotspot. Um, it has uh, a DHCP server on. That's the LAN settings there. And uh, you have some options for the uh, speed of the uh, LAN port itself. Um, so kind of interesting settings there. You can set the host name of it. Restart the device. You can update its firmware. Export its firmware to a local file. Again, just going through the settings. You know, read, your, read the manual. There's a bunch of options that you don't really need. Uh, but it's fairly full featured in terms of uh, your basic um, repeater uh, bridge. And then, of course, you can update uh, the password, uh, which is highly recommended so people don't get in there and uh, just hack all your settings out of there. So then on the operating status page, you can see that it is in bridge mode. That's exactly what we need to get a, a device that only has Ethernet jack on a Wi-Fi network. And then the next thing is to uh, go ahead and if all is good, you may need to reboot the unit. If all is good, then you can go ahead to your browser and uh, see if you can actually uh, load a page. That's what I do. Um, I went to CNN and it loaded fine and all was good there. So overall, you know, for I think it was $33, uh, it, it does what it's supposed to do. It's nice that you can just test it with your own laptop simply by turning off um, the Wi-Fi and testing this device out. Because what you then want to do is go ahead and, and plug this directly into another device which you may not be able to configure very easily. Um, through whatever interfaces it has. Um, I know the, the uh, manual IP address assignment for the charge controller that I want to uh, make wireless, um, uh, you know, you have to, uh, there's no keyboard on it, so you have to punch buttons up and down to get the IP address in there. So you want to make sure the unit is actually working and connecting to your Wi-Fi and that you can surf um, and then it's all configured as you need with the updated passwords, etc. So all in all, uh, for the price, a, a fairly good device to get uh, what would otherwise be a hardwired um, device like a charge controller, or even a printer, um, onto your Wi-Fi you know, slash wireless network. So that's it for the unbox, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.